Greetings. Welcome back to our thrilling adventure into the world of Flutterflow and Google AI. In this exciting episode, part three, we're meeting a fresh face in our saga, visual image-based AI. We're inviting Google Cloud, the system that backs up Firebase, to help us infuse more AI into our Flutterflow application. This is an app that we've been crafting across parts one and two of our video series. While you don't need these earlier videos to follow the concepts, following along hands-on will require watching the earlier videos. These earlier videos are linked in the video description. Our image AI approach will sound a lot like the text-based AI that we played with in the previous episode. Here's the twist though. Instead of the Palm 2 API, we're going to use the generative AI image APIs. Just like in our text-based saga, we'll be enabling these capabilities through the Vertex AI suite. All right, it's showtime. Once the application has materialized, we have a travel app with destinations, ratings, and a favorites feature. In our last video, the descriptions for each of these destinations were crafted by a large language model. Let's now throw in some Vision AI to whip up captions for images at each of the destinations. Just keep in mind the architecture is adaptable to other tasks like image generation and image Q&A. Firstly, we need a guinea pig, or rather an example image. Let's fetch one from our application's Firestore instance. So here's one image. Let's grab this link and download the image. Time to let Google's Vertex AI take the limelight. Let's see how we can create an engaging caption for our image sample through the Generative AI Studio. Okay, nothing groundbreaking. It just says there's a statue of Queen Victoria resting before a colossal building. That is genuinely Queen Victoria, so the AI seems to know the location without explicitly stating it. Now, if captioning's not your vibe, perhaps a visual Q&A is more your style. We have our image and we ask our question. Every now and then we hit a blockade. Specifically, we have an answer with extremely low confidence or we hit up against an AI safety guardrail. Let's tweak our prompt here and see if we can coax out an answer. As you can see, captioning is done much better by the dedicated feature, while this is more for simple question and answer. Imagine asking, what is the traffic light saying? It knows that we should stop in this situation. Now we need to craft some code in order to integrate this with Cloud Functions. Picture this, we're going to summon Cloud Functions to breathe life into our Firebase documents by adorning them with these image captions. Let's dive into Flutterflow and specifically open the door to our Firestore instance. Shifting gears to the Places schema, we need to incorporate the caption string for each document. While Firestore is a NoSQL database, adding a structured schema on top brings in some order, albeit artificially. Revisiting our previous steps, we're going to replicate the approach used for setting up the text generation AI function, the description generation mechanism. 
To jog your memory, we had constructed a service account and set up a cloud function that leverages the Vertex AI Palm 2 LLM to generate descriptions for the travel app. Ready to dive in again? Let's snatch this code or even copy the entire function, building a solid platform for our captioning system. Sticking by the first generation cloud functions, we have a reliable, non-preview feature for triggering with Cloud Firestore. Maintaining the event type as create and reusing the defaults is a good start for the function. Let's click Save, then Next, and brace ourselves to modify the code. Following the footsteps laid out in the Google Cloud documentation, we'll transform this function, specifically injecting the captioning Python code and wipe out the old text generation code. Our project ID? Fetch it from your home page. And we'll choose US Central 1 for our location. Observe how we're loading the image from a file. Given our function won't actually have access to this file within its local directory, we must download it. So how about trying the request library on for the download? Placing the code here, the plan is to leverage requests to download the file and if all goes well, write it to our file name. Digging deeper, we need to find that file location or URL within the belly of our main entry point. This critical data is within our Firestore document structure. So far, the configuration at the top looks right, and our download function seems ready for action. So let's pinpoint the image path and then set the download process in motion. Once we've got that in our grasp, let's save the file. Once the hard work is done, it's time for the grand reveal, caption generation. We just need one result and we will pick the best one that it musters up. Before we turn this loose and actually update our Firestore documents, let's take a pause and print out the captions just to double check the system. So far, so good. It looks like we need to include the requests import. Having successfully deployed our function, let's put it to the test. We'll cook up a brand new test document using an image string for Buckingham Palace. Let's christen our document test, adding the very image we just talked about. Next hotspot on our adventure, the Cloud Functions page. Here, click on Logs and our test invocation should come through.
There seems to be an error. A pesky read-only file system is preventing us from saving the file. But hey, where's the fun if everything goes smoothly, right? So let's devise a way to counter this. How about we tweak the code? We'll say goodbye to the working directory and let's test the waters with the temp directory instead. Okay, take two. Let's gear up for another round. Yes, that's more like it. We've cracked it. Take a look at our caption. A statue of Queen Victoria sits in front of a large building. Quite regal, wouldn't you say? Now let's upgrade our function a bit. Rather than merely printing our caption, let's use it for the caption field. One last tiny adjustment here, we're capitalizing the first letter in the caption. The capitalize method will do just the trick. Now, let's explore the treasure trove of ways that we could refurbish our former records here, our historical docs stowed away in our Firestore database. We're going to resort to a somewhat unexpected and a tad hacky approach since we're dealing with a fairly manageable collection of only about a dozen documents. First, we're planning to spruce up our cloud function with the update event type. Then we get the ball rolling on updating these records. Notice that pesky space hanging out in front of all descriptions? Well, that's our perfect alibi for initiating a document update and subsequently a hailstorm of caption generations. All right, with the groundwork done, let's get down to the task of revamping our documents one by one. For the coders in the house, yes, you can do this programmatically if you'd like. As we journey through this process, behold the image captions being updated. Witness the satisfying flicker of the update indicator as each field is refreshed, a little dance of success. Naturally, we can also perform this updating work in the Flutterflow interface. All right, folks, our data appears ship shape. Time for the grand reveal of our caption on the app. Use a text block for our shiny new caption. Our tastes lean towards keeping this a small font, maybe with a touch of subtlety through italics.
Don't forget to enable pop-ups to kick off the test view. Voila, we've now got our bespoke captions gracing our images, adding that finishing touch. We'll keep an eye on the comment section for any questions and want to thank you for watching. Please enjoy responsibly. Thank you.